All right, so even though most controllers can be mapped to work with the iPads, there was some, and they're still releasing some great DJ controllers specifically with the iPad in mind. And the first one we're gonna talk about is the one right here. This is the Reloop Buddy. Not only was this controller designed specifically for the iPad, but it was also designed specifically for the iPad app that I use, DJ Pro AI, which I think is one of the best DJ softwares out there. And the difference is, in if you look at the EQ over here, you will see that it is mapped for narrow mix and they um i believe the future of djing is going to be narrow mix instead of bass mids and highs it's going to be vocals harmonics and drums and the fact that they already have it on a controller is really promising and is really cool to use although it is kind of gimmicky because you could map narrow mix into any other eq so it's cool that it says it on on the controller but it really doesn't make that much of a difference Next is the new trend with the paddle shifters. So these are, um, they're supposed to represent like the old school battle mixers. So if you hold it down, it's like a button. And then when you let go, the effect is off. But if you put the effect up, then it stays on. So you can do echo outs and you can do really cool things with the effects. And then the next thing that makes this a iPad DJ controller is this iPad stand. Now, the only thing that I'm disappointed with is it does not hold the iPad with a case in it. So I got my case on and it does not it does not hold it with a case on. If you take the case off, then it, it will work perfectly, but for now you can't use it with a case. Another big drawback to this controller is if you look closely, there is no mic input, which I think is stupid. A lot of controllers of similar size are equipped with a mic input. And even if you're not a big MC, it's always nice to have your mic plugged in and be able to do announcements and stuff like that. So that was one of the biggest drawbacks of this controller for me. And overall, it's a pretty good starter controller, but there are other controllers that aren't designed specifically for the iPad, like the new uh, Pioneer DDJ4 Flex, and it just has more features, and this controller, although it's cool, it's not the best one you can get. The jog wheels are kind of small, and overall, it has kind of a cheap feel. I still love it, but I wish that they could have improved some of those things. Next is going to be a controller that I had for a long time that I really loved, and this controller is the Pioneer we go for. So this was designed specifically for the iPad and it was designed to be kind of different, kind of a new style, a sleeker style of DJing. So they went away from the traditional two decks and a mixer. So what they did was they put the buttons, they put these buttons over here, if you could see where I'm pointing my mouse, uh, around the jog wheel so it looks kind of like there's less buttons and it looks more smooth and more aesthetically pleasing and I do think it it does look great and it did have an iPad stand and this one depending on what case you were using it did work with the iPad and it was really small really portable and you, you could do anything that you needed to do you had you had your looper you had your FX you had four pads down here for your hot cues and you had the jog wheels lit up so yeah, they weren't that bright you couldn't really see them that much but it did look really cool when you touch the jog wheels they did light up and it really made a cool effect and then the next thing that you'll notice is this is only a three band a two band eq so there's lows and highs and then the bottom one is a filter you could set it to be lows mids and highs and then you got no filter but nowadays, most DJs really use these filters a lot, so it's great to have it. So this controller is more for beginners and basic DJing and not for like big professional DJing. So most people that are just getting started out are only really going to need the lows and the highs when they mix. They don't really need the mids. So having filter lows and highs, it really doesn't compromise much, and it gives you a nice sleek three-band EQ. The... The volume fader and the cross fader, they were small, but they worked well. 
And another thing that's a drawback on this controller would be the tempo slider. This one was more made for people that are going to use the sync button and DJ like that and not do that much manual beat matching. So they didn't really uh, give you the biggest, most accurate uh, tempo sliders, but I don't think that's the most important thing that someone that's going to get this controller is going to be thinking about. Uh, and one surprising fact is this controller, if you look over here, it actually did have a microphone in input. So it was about the same price as the Re Reloop Buddy, around 300 uh, or somewhere around there. I got mine used. And to be able to have everything you need and a mic input, it made it a great controller, and I really liked it. Uh, the only thing was towards the end, the jog wheel started to skip, so they weren't very accurate when you were scratching. I don't know if I wore them out too much, but that was one of the things, and that's really, really important to have accurate jog wheels. So this one kind of, it was glitchy when you would use the jog wheels, and that's why I ended up getting rid of it. Overall, great controller. I love controllers that kind of look different than the other ones, and this one definitely has a style of its own. Now let's go to one of my favorite controllers. This is what really got me into iPad DJing, and I thought that they would make more controllers like this, but so far they haven't. So this thing was a beast. I remember when it first came out, I paid like maybe close to $500 for it, and it was supposed to be the professional um, the best professional controller, heavy duty professional full controller for the iPad. And the coolest thing was you would slide the iPad into the middle. And then when you plugged in the iPad, DJ Pro would have, if you see this, the screen that's here, this was only the screen you only saw when you used this controller. It was really cool, very integrated with the DJ Pro AI software. And it was just so cool to have it as like a contained unit. So the new a lot of the new controllers have screens on them uh, or have their own DJ software built into the controller. And it was really cool to just get this controller, slide your iPad in, and you have this really cool device with a touchscreen right in the middle. Uh, the only thing is it came with an attached uh, regular iPhone charger cable. So it's not like with this controller, it has the USB B sections where you could just plug in a USB-C cord that has a USB at the end and then plug it right into your iPad. This one was built in and you couldn't choose which cord you used. So when they, first it was the big like 13 pin one, like the old, the really old one. And then uh, when the new iPad updated to the chargers that we see now, I got an adapter and it worked fine. But then once the iPads went to USB-C, then I would have like three adapters in and I couldn't find an adapter that would work. If you guys have this controller and you figured out how to make it work with USB-C, please let me know in the comments because I really love this controller and that's why I got rid of it. The, there was a couple, I did some of my first DJ gigs with it. Uh, Sweet 16 that I did at like a school gym. It was one of my first DJ gigs. This was my mom's friend's party. That's me and my brother over there and I was using this controller and I loved it. So the weird thing about it was instead of the volume faders that we're used to, that we can mix or slam up and down really easily, this had some weird big rotary dials, kind of like on a stereo system or something, and you would like dial in the volume. It was kind of weird to use, but, over, but overall that was basically the only drawback. The buttons were good quality. The whole top was metal. It had that nice cold metal feel to it. Another thing that was weird was that the EQs, most you're used to, the EQs been in the middle forever. You're used to having the EQs down here. And this was one of the few controllers that actually had the EQ knobs. I don't know if you could see them up there. So you had to go up over the jog wheel and sometimes like your elbow would hit the jog wheel and it would mess things up. So that was another drawback, but still no big deal. It had microphone input, input, but it also had the microphone pitch, so you could change the pitch of the microphone, which I thought was really cool at the time. And then even though this was an older controller, they still were able to put a filter in over here. So right there to the left of the jog wheel was a little tiny filter, and it worked pretty well. Uh, the, the BPM sliders were big. This was made to be a professional controller. I don't think it worked very, it, 
I don't think it really lived up to what it was supposed to be, but overall, it was just a really awesome, cool controller. And I am so excited to see if they make a new one where you can still slide the iPad in. I see why it didn't work because all the, iP the new iPads were different shapes and sizes, so they wouldn't really fit into the controller perfectly. I remember towards the end of when I was using it, I would just have my iPad on top of it or use an iPad stand because you couldn't really slide it in. So that was kind of a drawback. And that is also why they might not come up, come out with a new one, but I really hope they do.